Welcome to the special episode of Optimal Game State. Today, we're actually playing games. The goal of this channel is always to put together a fun game. Now, every Christmas, I always play some games with my brother, which is great fun. We've been playing a lot of Warcry since it came out, and he's got a decent sized Stormcast force now. This year, I'm a little bit more organized, and rather than the usual random games, I put together a mini campaign. I'm using the Path of Ventac campaign from the main Warcry rulebook, changing the team slightly. In this version, Warden King Klaus will bring presents from the Northern Dwarden holds down to the cities of Sigmar when he was attacked by Chaos Warriors. The Stormcast here to save the day are a group of Sacrosat led by the Evacator Prime Darius Lightning Soul. With him, he has Heldinius and Taltros, two Evocators, Marinius, a Sequitur, and two Griffhounds, Ilex and Hedra. The Evocators are great fighters and have served this warband well over the years. The two Griffhounds are super fast, which can be useful, but there was some bit debate whether to take them or not, as they can't carry treasure, and we know that this will be important. The first battle will have the In the Dark rules, which is why no Castigators with bows were picked. And then the Sequitur was picked to round out the numbers. Eager to reclaim his lost presence, they are accompanied by Warden King Klaus, who provides support from his sack of treasures. They're all reskinned lesser artifacts with a Christmas team. Klaus is from the Tempest Eye, Cities of Sigmar warband, so he opens up that awesome triple Swift as the Wind ability. The Stormcast have come upon the camp of Krom Felhart in the middle of the night. This battle has everyone starting on the table turn one. There are five present tokens, but only one is the important present. Unfortunately, only the Chaos Warband know which it is. At the end of each turn, the Chaos Warband will remove one present. And at the end of turn four, whoever has the important present wins. The twist is dead of night, meaning no fighter can see beyond four inches. That won't make a difference to the models we picked, but did impact those selections. Felhart's Raiders consist of one Aspiring Champion, six Chaos Warriors, all from a start collecting box, and two Chaos Warhounds. The Aspiring Champion is basically a slightly upgraded Chaos Warrior, and these are all pretty insanely tough at six toughness, and all have two slash four damage, so they can get a lot of work done. The Warhounds are a bit of speed, and their reaction is super action efficient, making them great support for any hero. I don't particularly like the actual Chaos Warhound models, so these are Fenrisian Wolves on Oval Bases. At the start of this battle, we have the Chaos Warband in the center, split between three groups. Darius the Evocator Prime is in the southeast with the Griffhound Ilex. The two Evocators are off to the west, and everyone else is coming in from the north. The first turn is mostly spent picking up presents, Darius gets one, as does Klaus. Three of the Chaos Warriors grab the ones nearest to them. One takes a big risk and goes west where the two Evocators are. The battle breaks out into three separate areas, with both Stormcast and Chaos Warriors weathering multiple hits. The Warhounds and the Griffhounds don't prove as resilient and soon go down. As the battle goes on, the fake presents are slowly removed, and in the last turn it's clear the real present is held by the Chaos Warrior, Fator Hackbile, in the middle south, well away from the battles. The Stormcasts are unable to extricate themselves, and the first battle goes to Chaos. After the battle, we go through the casualties and Renown, and Taltros ends up with a broken leg, while Darius and Marinos both roll sixes to get an extra point of Renown. Keeping to his promises, Warden King Klaus brings more gifts for the warband, with a gingerbread house and a gingerbread man. The second battle is a chase through the snow. The campaign from the book lets you roll a twist, but this seems apt. The actual twist is Swampland, which reduces movement by one, but that just works just as well for snow, and I added some extra Christmas decoration snow onto the board. As the winner of the previous battle, the Chaos Warband is trying to make it to the northern edge, 
with no Stormcast nearby, and if they do, they can escape. If three make it off the board, Chaos wins. If that hasn't happened by turn four, or the Stormcast managed to kill three of the Chaos Warriors, then the Stormcast win. For this battle, Fator Hackbile and Jaeger Hellreek are joined by Kagra's Ravagers. This is the Underworld's Warband. For the stats, Kagra is a Chaos Lord, Zarshia is a Chaos Sorcerer, with Dara Kragan and Radic Godblessed both as Chaos Chosen. This was a little bit of a creative license for me, as the Chosen have two-handed weapons normally, but making these guys a little tougher made sense. To match the first Warband, the leader is in the dagger, with the remaining evenly split between the hammer and the shield. The sisters Kagra and Zarshia start in the middle, with the other two in the south east and the west corners. They're all going to just rush north as fast as possible. There is a fence there, but it's just for looks. On the first turn, only the two evocators are on the board and start in the middle south. Turn two, the Warden King, Griffhound, and Sequitor join. The Evocators press the sisters, getting close enough to the board edge that they can't leave this turn. Klaus attacks a nearby Chaos Warrior and uses the ability Swift as the Wind, giving plus six move to Sequitur and Griffhound. This lets them zoom over to be in front of the sisters. Turn three, the first Chaos Warrior in the Northwest gets off the board but the second is stopped by careful positioning of the Griffhand. Klaus finishes off his Chaos Warrior, giving the Stormcast some hope that they'll be able to get three kills. Turn four, the Stormcast hold most of the Northern Line, but the Northeast corner is still open. First, the Chaos Warrior there gets through, the Evocator tries his best to stop Zarshia, but due to the quad, she's able to disengage, move, and then move again to sneak off the board and win the game for Chaos. A real close game. If that quad wasn't there, then the Stormcast would have won. This was pretty low casualties for them though, and only a Griffhound went down, but it was just a flesh wound. The other Griffhound, Ilex, gets a point of renown, while the two Evocators get some extra treasure. Battle 3 is the battle at the encampment. The Chaos Warband has retreated to their fort, but have been pursued by the Stormcast. This is a simple battle with 5 present tokens on the board that the Warbands battle over. At the end of round 5, whoever has the most presents win, just like Christmas morning. The Warband the Stormcast faced this time is led by Lothar Godslayer, a Chaos Lord on Karadrak. This guy is a beatstick at 375 points and hits like a truck. He's also fast with a mounted speed of 8. Along with him are two Warhounds and that leaves enough for four Chaos Warriors split into two groups. For this battle, Darius and Ilex stand alone outside the gates of the Chaos Stronghold. On round 2, Lothar and his hounds will appear in the northeast and the two evocators will appear from the southern board edge. Turn 3 will have the remainder of the Stormcast in the middle north. The first turn has everyone moving in to pick up presents. With only Darius and Ilex, who doesn't have the hands, the Stormcast can only grab one. Ilex does step in front of a present, preventing the Chaos Warriors from grabbing. Turn 2, the Chaos Warrior knocks out Ilex and grabs the present. The evocators move in and start doing damage to the Chaos Warriors holding treasure. The ones that can retreat to the east of the map where they'll stay for the rest of the game. Then Lothar rides in. His first strike doesn't take down the evocator but he gets a second go at the start of turn 3. The remaining Stormcast enter from the north. Klaus grabs the present hidden behind the small wall and uses Swift as the wind to supercharge the rest of the group. The second Griffhound starts nipping at the heels of the two Warhounds. Importantly, Darius gets some damage on the Chaos Warrior with a gold present. Going into turn 4, it's all to play for. The Chaos Warband has 3 treasure, but one, Valmir Mortgen, is out of position and surrounded in the middle of the board. Darius makes a bold play. He attacks, taking down Valmir, but the present is loose. 
Darius then uses a triple for inspiring presence to lead the nearby evocator, Taltros, to take the next action, and who then moves to pick up the treasure. Furious, Lothar Godslayer charges in, but just can't do enough damage, ending turn 4 with the Stormcast having 3 presence to the Chaos Warband 2. Victory to the Stormcast. We had a lot of fun playing these games. We also made a lot of mistakes and definitely could have played uh, the games a lot better. As a prize for winning, my brother got to open a bonus Christmas present, a box of Evocators Riding Dracoline. I'm sure they'll be a nice addition to his warband. Thanks for making it all the way to the end. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Each week I put up a new video talking about one of Games Workshop's specialist games. The goal is always to try and make the best possible two-player experience. If this is something you'd find interesting, please subscribe to the channel and comment to let me know what you'd like to see in future.